Welcome to the madhouse. <laughs> Hello, everyone. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the Mindless Work Podcast. Sammy is sitting right there. I'm over here. Hello. Well, we got two different cameras, finally. So, I have my own camera. He's got his own camera. But we're still going to be talking to each other. Talking? So, Chit-chatting? Chit-chatting. Stuff, but you got your own camera now. We're kind of stepping up now. Yeah. It's like media production. It's like, we were production. here, and now we're here. Yeah. Uh, we got the shotgun mics loaded on both of them. Um, yeah. So let's talk a little bit about, um, well, first and foremost, welcome back to the Miles Horror Podcast, yeah. uh, episode 33, 34? I don't know, it's a number. It's 33, I want to say 33, I'm calling it 33. Episode 33, Miles Horror Podcast, last week we had Selena on the show. Um, that was fun. That was fun. You guys, you two are something else. Yeah, we are. We had a really good time. Yeah, yeah. Every time, I mean... Just to be frank and honest about our relationship, I probably talk to her at least four or five times a week for an hour. Yeah, that that's that sounds like sounds about right. So we have pretty good talking chemistry, and if you just give us something to talk about, we can talk about it probably for like easily. Yeah, for kind of yeah. So today on the show, we're going to be talking about a couple things. This past weekend was South by Southwest. Yeah. Um, as of this recording, it's still going on, but. Um, South by Southwest is a convention that happens in Austin. Uh, just a convention, kind of like just to. It's for gaming. It's for pretty much everything. It's, every, it's super, just like anything. Yeah. But we got some big news. Um, they screened us yes. for the first time in front of an audience at South by Southwest. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about that, some of the reviews on that. We'll talk a little bit about what we're uh, anticipated for on that. We're also going to talk about um, the Doom movie. Uh, we got some news on that, which kind of excites me, and we'll get a little bit on that later. And the last thing we're going to talk about, because this past week was International Women's Day, we're going to talk about our five favorite uh, horror, uh, women in horror. Yes, so. of course, I'm excited for that. I, I did my research. Yeah, like about ten minutes before we started shooting. Yeah. But he got it. I got it. Yeah. I, I mean, I had a couple already in my head. Yeah. But I was like, I was really struggling for like two of them. Like, yeah. There's so many women in horror, so yeah. it's like five of them. Like I'm gonna give, I'm gonna pay homage to five. Five, yeah. I I, I was looking over at my movies because I I'm kind of still combining my list. I I need like one more, or two more, but uh, I think I'll have it by the time we get there. So let's talk about our first topic today. We're gonna talk about um, us. Uh, now, us. us got premiered at South by Southwest, and the reviews are in. It is fantastic. They said. Yeah, definitely. I I think if you saw Get Out. Which I know I watched, you watched, yeah. A lot of people watched. It got Oscar buzz. Yeah. That, and then you see, the the preview to us, and you're just like, I got five on it too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like five out of five stars. Here we come. Here we go. Uh, so Jordan Pill is coming back and doing um another horror movie. Funny enough, Jordan Pill said he doesn't like doing horror. He's good at it though. I mean, uh, he hates horror movies though, but like he's good at it. Uh, and we brought back a, a thing that we talked about last time that if you can do horror or if you can do comedy You can do anything. Yeah, because comedy is the hardest thing to write. Yeah, definitely It's very hard to write because you have to write something and although you may think it's funny You have to have someone else make it come to life and exactly. have the comedic timing Exactly, um, and that's that's one of the things that uh, Jordan Peele just nails every time he makes a this is a second horror movie Writer and director. I think he stepped out of the spotlight for a little bit. He's coming back in the spotlight for Twilight Zone. I'm really excited. Yeah. But um, he wrote and directed Get Out, and it was amazing with audiences. It was it won the best screenplay Academy Award. I think what's really cool too is he he pays homage obviously to African American culture. He he most of his cast is African American, yeah. and um, and so I think it's really cool, especially I mean, as a Latino to like see someone of color be able to do that. I think it probably means even more to someone that's African-American or black to be able to see 
you know, that, that likes Hoy to be like, well, if Jordan Peele can do it, why can't I? Yeah, no doubt. I, I completely agree with you. And that's a perfect example with uh, La Llorona. Yeah. I mean, James Wan is doing it, but uh, that's like the Mexican culture right there of horror. Yeah. So it's like... Um, I mean, if they made that Chupacabra next... I'd we, be for it. We'd be all in. Oh, yeah, I'm in. Um, but Us got was at South by Southwest. They screened it to an audience, and so far on Rotten Tomatoes, the movie comes out, I think, about two or three weeks now. Two weeks, yeah. right? I don't know. We got tickets. It's I know the 25th. That. So whatever date that is, I, I can't do about, that. I think it's two weeks. So it's, I'm going to say two weeks, because, yeah, it's two weeks. The movie comes out in two weeks, and... Uh, it's already at 100% with 10 reviews, that's really um, good. and it looks that that that's really good. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, what this next installment for him is, and how we're gonna get it, be able to uh, how he's gonna be able to top get out. I think what's really crazy too is like he makes these horror suspense movies, but they always have a deeper meaning behind them, and I really feel like. You know, obviously, I haven't seen the film, and you know, we'll probably talk about it after we watch it. Yeah. But I really feel like it's banking on this idea that we're our own worst enemy, yeah. and the scariest thing we would ever have to face is ourselves. And that's the thing with Get Out. Not a lot of people knew what that movie was, and so we're going into this movie again kind of with questions. Like, yeah. okay, is it just is this supposed to be we have to face us in society? We've always had those bad days. This is the negative part of us and stuff like that. Yeah. That's how I'm looking at it. It's a negative and a positive in a way. Yeah. So, I don't know. I'm going in with a lot of questions, and hopefully they'll all get answered. Um, but we'll see. Get out, though, at 100%. I'm really happy for that. All right, all right, all right. All right, guys. So when we recorded the first time, we were at a different... Um, we, it was a different day. Uh, it was last week, as of this recording. And we had some troubles with Sammy's camera, but uh, I had to clear off the SD card. And it was fine. We fixed it. Yeah, so we're back to a healthy place, you can see. There may have been some shaving that happened. Shaving, hair uh, trimming, cuts. haircuts, different so wardrobe. I, I still wear the Kiss Beanie, though, just to yeah. be kind of cool about it. Um, He's trying to be cool. Trying to be cool. I didn't know we were shooting. I just said, let's hang out. And yeah. Yeah. I thought you figured we had to finish it, that's why. I, mean, no, I, I knew we had out. to finish it, but hanging out I mean, was I did cool. too. I just wanted to hang out. But, but uh, hey, we're here. So we're going to talk, the next thing that we're going to talk about um, is going to be, of course, the new Doom movie that they're coming out with. Doom, Doom, Doom. So I don't know if you're a fan of Doom. Do you know anything about Doom? Uh, what do I know about Doom? Well, let's see, it's a video game? Yeah. Uh, that, was it, what did it come out on? I know it was on Nintendo 64. Xbox. I mean, yeah, they made remakes. But, I mean, outside of that, I know there was a movie that came out like, 2004 with like the rock the anything. rock but that had nothing to do with the game because i don't know why they did that yeah i mean um but then they just made a remake a few years ago yeah the game that was popular and that's they're coming out yeah. with another game pretty soon but i guess this new doom movie that's coming out is going to be um how do you say it it's going to be more true to the game so it's gonna it's gonna be far more of the storyline and characters of the game. Then? Yeah, so it might actually be one of those movies where it um, maybe follows the game timeline. I don't know. Does it have an anticipated release date yet? I think it's supposed to be in the next year or two. Okay. But I'm I'm really excited because I, I really love the games and the games were really fun. Uh, I highly suggest you play the new one for the Xbox One. It's beautiful. We'll see. Sound, the soundtrack to it is just full on heavy metal throughout the whole thing. So it's like as you're playing, it's like you're rocking out. I'm not gonna say it. I'm gonna say something bad. You were gonna say something bad. I saw it in your eyes. But uh, the Doom game is coming out pretty. Or I'm sorry. Well, there's a game coming out pretty soon that looks good. But the movie should be hopefully coming out soon. We'll keep you updated on the podcast if something does come out pretty soon. I mean, what do we know anything about it anyways? Uh, not too much. I don't know if they've really revealed cast. I gotta relook really at that. Um, I know that they were making a new movie and that the movie's gonna be more loyal to the game. Other than that, I don't know about casting yet. There may have been some casting news, but I have not seen anything as of yet. What, what would you like to see from the movie? Me, personally, uh, when I played this new one, you play as this, like, soldier on Mars. So seeing that would have been pretty cool because, uh, you going on Mars, discovering that scientists opened up a portal to hell releasing all these demons and stuff. I want to see a lot of that. Uh, the game, of course, is in first person. Um, something that I would like is to get a well-known actor to do the voice, make it maybe like a deep voice and stuff like that. We don't really hear his voice throughout the game. You don't even see him. Uh, he's an unknown character. He's in his armor the entire time. So 
that would be pretty cool if they can do something like that where it's the character is in his armor the entire time. You don't see him, but you do hear his voice. Who would you like to see? As the character or the voice? Uh, either one. Actually, let's go both. As the character, you need someone, a bodybuilder of some sort. Uh, I don't know, man. Someone strong. Joe Meganago would be pretty good. Yeah, that'd be pretty good. He's a little bit older, so I don't know. I don't know. I, don't know. I, don't know. I mean, they never really confirmed any of the ages. He's always just been a badass soldier. Uh, for the voice, though, I mean, it'd be it'd be pretty interesting. I don't know. I mean, I don't know how they sound. I don't know if they've ever done voice. So I don't know who could play the voice. Someone with a deep voice. I would say someone like maybe Liam Neeson would be pretty cool, but that's just kind of an obvious. Yeah. I'll find you. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of an obvious, but uh, I don't know, man. Maybe Ron Perlman, that'd be pretty cool, too. So, you, so you'd so like to see the character be played by one person and maybe the voice be done, somebody, done by somebody else? Or if the, they could do both, but... I mean, I've always... You've never seen the guy's face, therefore I would assume we would never see him that pace. It'd be pretty cool if they got someone that we don't know. Like a pretty unknown actor and really made him, like, made the world for them. Yeah, on top of that, I think another good thing, too, would be if they got a bodybuilder of some sort to do the uh, the movement of the character. Like someone that we don't know because it could just be a stunt guy, honestly, out of the suit. And the voice can be something else. It doesn't even have to be a well-known actor. So maybe we play like a Star Wars, where we have one person play Darth Vader and then another and then person someone voice voice. it. Yeah. So, I mean, it could be something like that. That's how I think about it. That'd be pretty interesting. Yeah. Uh, Mostly, though, no, I think three people play Darth Vader, but that's besides the point. Three people play Darth Vader? Wasn't well, there the one dude who's like the standing dude? And there's a dude that's his face in episode six. And there's, that's right. And then there's James Earl Jones. James Earl Jones. And then the if you want to count a fourth, the guy who played Anakin Skywalker... And young Annie from the five people, if you want to count that. I mean, that's not going to really count those, but it's really more of, I was really going for the idea of, like, three people playing actually. Vader. Yeah, yeah, just Vader for those movies. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, it's just episode six, I guess, because you don't see me do that. Oh, yeah, easily. Episodes. But, um, yeah, man, Doom, uh, more news comes out, we'll let you guys know, of course, because that's something I'm going to be very much wanting to keep up on. Yeah, I mean, maybe it'll be something I enjoy as well. We'll see. We'll see. we got to get you in the game first. Yes, EA Sports. Uh, next thing we're going to talk about, the last thing we're going to talk about on the podcast today is, of course, uh, National Women's Week was a couple weeks ago. Uh, I, I want to kind of consider it the month of March, really. Yeah, it looked like a month. Um, I, even though they gave them one day, but I want to consider it the month of March. And during National Women's Day, I thought it'd be kind of interesting me and you can list off our five top favorite um, women in horror. Yeah, no, I was kind of excited because I got, I got to do some research. I just didn't want to name, like, five people off the top of my head. Yeah. I wanted to be able to play homage to, you know, five different women. Yeah, yeah. So I'm pretty excited for my list. So do you want me to go first or you want to go first? You know what? Maybe, I don't know. You, how about you start? And then okay. Name, name, maybe name a couple and then I'll name a couple. So number five for me, just because we're in a new modern era and stuff like that of horror, is going to go to the uh, Millie Bobby Brown, who plays Eleven on Stranger Things. Huh! Um, I think she, for her age, is a fantastic actress. I've seen her really up and coming as far as uh, stuff with Stranger Things, and she's going to be in the new Godzilla movie as yeah, well. Yeah, I'm super excited about Godzilla. So Godzilla looks good. Uh, on top of that, I follow her on social media, and she just looks like she's a sweetheart. Yeah, I mean, although her relationship with Drake is a little questionable, but that's... A little questionable, but... That's for another time of day. Yeah, but nonetheless, uh, I think Eleven does an amazing job on the show, Millie Bobby Brown. Um, she plays her character fantastic, and we're starting to see more character development as the seasons go on. Like, the first season, she didn't talk as much. This season, she starts talking more. She's starting to become more of a little girl now. And let's see, hopefully, in the third season that she's really open now. Yeah, and I think what's really cool, like, just talk about her acting abilities in general... As you, you take her from a character that really doesn't talk, and so she takes one of the the tools you have as your voice, obviously, in acting. Yeah. And she doesn't have that. So she has to use really her body language. Emotions. And emotions stuff, yeah. and things like that to really play the role. And I think that's super cool. Yeah, and that's why I liked uh, Stranger Things a lot, just because the fact the chemistry between all the kids and stuff was really cool. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it kind of takes me to Ed as well. Yeah. Just because I love the chemistry between the kids and Ed, and I love the chemistry in the kids in Stranger Things. Yeah, easily. So what is your number five? Uh, number five for me, I'm going to go with uh, Carolyn Jones. Carolyn Jones. You know who she is? Who is that from? All uh, right, she's from the original House of Wax. Okay. So paying homage to someone a little bit uh, a little old school, a little old school in the Respect game. Respect that. 
Yeah, you know, not the not the remake with Paris Hilton, but we're going all the way back. All the way back. I all the way back. That. Um, and she was in the Adams Family. Uh, she plays the mother. Whose name? I'm in sure. the original Adams Family, right? Yeah, the one that came out in like the fifties. The or black something. and white one. Yeah, the black and white one. Yeah, yeah. One. Paying homage to classic. Yeah. I respect that. That's your number five? That's my number five. Good number five right there. I think my number four, honestly, is going to go to... I don't remember her name, but she was the lady in The Shining. I have no idea. You're the wrong person. Yeah. Um, the Shining, of course. I'm going to pull up her name right now. I can go my number four in the meantime if you want. Do your number four, and then we'll come back to All me. All right, I'll go with Mary Lambert. Mary Lambert. Yeah, we're looking at a director in the game here. A director. Okay. Yes. All right, so many of you are, as you know, is Pet Cemetery is coming out. Oh yeah. So if we go back to the original Pet Cemetery, Mary Lambert is the fine lady that directs those movies. One of those uh, directors that is unknown. I mean, is known, but like you really don't think about her work. Um, I think she does a very great job in those Stephen King adaptions, and with you know the new Pet Cemetery coming out, you got to pay homage to the original. Yeah, the stepping stone. So that's a good one. Back to my. Of course, number four. Uh, her name is Shelley Duvall, and she plays Wendy. You Lewis. didn't even mention that name, and I what, totally forget. What happened? You said that name the other day when we were about to film. Oh, yeah. I'm going to do Shelley Duvall. Yeah. Shelley Duvall plays Wendy Torrance in The Shining, one of the greatest horror movies of all time, in my opinion, I believe. Um, and yeah, her performance in that movie is fantastic. Uh, the fear that they brought to that movie was awesome. The mystery was awesome. And sadly, to this day, she's kind of gone a little crazy, but it is what it is. But, yeah, she's going to be my number four. You know, some of all of us are a little bit crazy. It's a little bit crazy. What's your number three, Sammy? Number three, I'm going to go with another little old school here. We just, we just saw her last October in a really great film. About 40 years later. Jamie Lee Curtis. Jamie Lee Curtis. The classic screen queen. Classic passed screen. down from her mom in the original Psycho. Yes, of course. Passed down. I was going to pay homage to her mom. But I was like, why not give it to Jamie Lee? I get you. Jamie Lee's a good one. Halloween, Michael Myers. My number three is going to go to... Mother Voorhees. Pamela Voorhees from... Friday the 13th, the original. the original, she was the killer in the movie, put on a fantastic performance, the mother of Jason Voorhees, uh, of course, in the movie, the constant quote was, mommy's little boy, you can't go wrong with Pamela Voorhees, though she's an OG, she's badass, she's awesome, and I'm going to pay homage to her. Alright, I'm going to go with another great one here. Um, kind of sticking on that idea of Psycho a little bit, going back to you know, Jamie Lee Curtis. His mom was in Psycho, the original. We had a great TV series called The Bates Motel. Oh, yeah. There, for me, I believe that's how you pronounce Yeah, it. not only has she been in Psycho, but she's been in The Conjuring that's movies. That's what I was about to bring up as well. She's yeah. in The Conjuring movies. She's done a lot of horror. Yeah, so she's very modern she's, in that. I think she's coming out with the new Godzilla as well. Is she? I didn't know Yeah, that. I think she's coming out with the new Godzilla. Yeah, so, I mean, she's really good. Um, she's a really good uh, actress. She's really, you know, making horror relevant again, I think. Oh, yeah, Obviously definitely. Obviously, the Conjuring series, and definitely. the way she was in the Bates Motel was just impeccable. Definitely, definitely. I also really much liked, um, not only in Bates Motel, but, like, we brought up The Conjuring. Uh, she's fantastic on that show, or show, movie, uh, in both of them, playing, um, one of the, what was the, the family's name? I don't remember the family. I don't remember the name of the family. Uh, right the there. Warrens. Ed and Lorraine oh, Warren. Oh, yeah, yeah, Lorraine Warren. Uh, and I think she does an amazing job, uh, portraying that character. Um, cause it actually brings the movie to life to me, honestly. Uh, I feel that, uh, her portrayal as Lorraine Warren, um... It's fantastic, and I cannot wait to see her in a future Conjuring movie. Yeah, no, I think she makes the Conjuring movies great. She has a lot of passion. Um, and, you know, I would hope to see if maybe she does some more horror movies. Hopefully, yeah. She just came out in Glass. Glass was good. Oh, she was in Glass. Oh, wait, no, no. I'm thinking of my next person. No, no, no. I know you. You're thinking of Sarah Paulson. My next number two, Sarah Paulson. Sarah Paulson, of course, been in Glass. That was a fantastic movie. And uh, she's also an American Horror Story veteran. Definitely. I mean, I can, I can see how you get those confused, because they kind of look somewhat similar. No, and they've, uh, well, her sister's been on American Horror Story, so I was thinking about her sister at the same time. Who's her sister? Her sister is, uh, 
She's in the first season. Have you seen the first season of American Horror Story? Yeah, yeah but it's been a while. But she's the she's the she's the little she's the daughter. She was also in the Nun, but you didn't watch the Nun. But no, I didn't watch the Nun. She I played one that. of the main characters in the Nun. Her oh, sister. Was, oh, I was very excited to watch the Nun, but couldn't get one to watch her. Yeah, but she was in the Nun as well, and she's just uh, she's a good little up and coming actress. So that's cool. That's awesome. Uh, and you're number one. All right. You did a live stream of this movie. Linda Blair. Blair. <laughs> Say no more. Say no more. I mean, the... she's scaring audiences. For the Exorcist, years. yeah, has been going on for I think forty five years now. Oh, 45, I'm sorry, yeah. long it's been. Um, and she will always be iconic. Easily. For the the head twirls, spider walk. Yeah, yeah. It's a beautiful day for uh, an exorcism. An exorcism. That's a fantastic line delivered. Although my number one is going to be current screen queen, Jamie Lee Curtis. Jamie Lee Curtis, uh, I believe. I'm surprised we only had one though in the sin. Yeah, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis for me, I believe, in Halloween just blew me away. Um, but the fact that she brought that tension in Halloween 40, which was the newest Halloween, I yeah. call it Halloween 40 because 40 years later. Yeah. Um, when she brought that character back and made her a badass, and you saw how um, traumatized she was from the Michael Myers killings 40 years later, that really brought realism to me for the movie. Uh, on top of that, like we said earlier, her mother, of course, the original Scream Queen from Psycho, um, when you got Legacy like that, uh, you're automatically, like, number one in my book. Now, I will do an honorable mention, and that is going to be Linda Blair. Of I'm course. not going to leave Linda Blair out, because Linda Blair did a fantastic job in The Exorcist, and you can't, you can't mention Woman in Horror without bringing up Linda Blair. It's a yeah. must. I mean, she really... To think, like, well, obviously you mentioned Millie Bobby Brown who's doing it at a young age. Yeah. Linda Blair was doing it at a young age. Yeah, I think she was about Millie Bobby Brown's age when she did it. And she's grown up now. She, I think she did a sequel to The Exorcist as well. Um, was there? I don't, I don't know. Yeah, that I, was a I, sequel. She, that's the only movie I know her in. That was a sequel to that, and she was in that. Um, but, oh yeah, and I think she wasn't in the TV series, but her character was. Okay. So... It shows you how much that this is span. On top of that, she's probably... I, I've heard she's one of the nicest women in real life. She has her own charity for, I think, uh, pets or something like that. Uh, and she's always open to signing autographs at, at events and stuff like that. She's If you buy, like, an extra Funko Pop, she'll sign it. Proof be shown, TLAV bought a Funko Pop from the uh, an Exorcist Funko Pop and she signed it and everything. So she's really open about who she was back in the day and stuff like that. Well, I think that, that's her role, you know what I mean? That role really changed who she was as an individual. She's been affected by that role. Yeah. She poured her heart, soul, blood, tears, every part of her body into that role. Yeah. And, it's and that's just, why I could not... You know, can't not, forget her, yeah. Can't forget her. It's, it's a must. I mean, even though, you know, I, I, I put her as an honorable mention, I think she still deserves the credit she deserves. Definitely. So that is going to be our women in horror list, and that is actually going to be the end of the Mindless Horror Podcast. Uh, let us know if you like this new setup, because I kind of like it, if this works out, especially with the audio. I think the problem when I was editing the first half was just the audio, because we had a mic going on you and a mic going on me, so cutting back and forth with just uh, with just one audio or two audio files was kind of hard, but if we just do it with one audio file, we should be all right. But I, I like this new setup. What do you think, man? No, it's, uh, I think it's fun. Yeah. Um, obviously, you get to... See two different perspectives. And Easily. We each get our own camera. We each get our own camera. We get to relax. Yeah. It's a good time. But, good I mean, time. if you guys liked anything else we've done, or if you have any other suggestions, let us know up. what you guys think about the video podcast in general, though. I mean, if you guys want us to go back to audio, we will. But I actually like the video, because you get to see what we're talking about. You get to see our studio a little bit. Yeah, and you get to see how ugly I am in general. Ugly how both of we are. So yeah. We're not alone, so. Yeah. Anyway, my name is Anthony. It's your boy, Sam. We are the two masterminds behind the Mindless Horror Podcast. I'm we, not a mastermind. You're not a mastermind. I'm, you've been I'm there since scared. the beginning. You've been there since the beginning. OG. OG. Uh, we are going to bring you more episodes constantly. we got a couple episodes lined up. Be sure to tune in next week because we got some very special guests coming on the Mindless Horror Podcast. And it's not entertainment. It's not entertainment. It's not SoCal Exploring. It's not Aqua Narsic. I'll give you a hint. They're a media channel now, and they're doing very well. They're, they're doing very great work. 5,000 subscribers, and if that doesn't give you enough, I don't know it will. But you're going to have to wait till next week if you guys can figure it out. But thank you, everyone, for watching, and we will see you guys next time.
Bye-bye.